I grew up in Detroit. Uh, I was number three of a family of four brothers. My two older brothers served in World War II. Uh, one for three years on the uh, cruiser Pasadena, all in the South Pacific. And my younger brother was in Korea at the same time I was. So we all did our time and we're glad to do it. Robert Simonek joined the Marines after high school during the Korean War. Trained at Paris Island and later at Camp Pendleton, he set sail for Korea to join the 2nd Battalion of the 5th Marines. I was a rifleman for most of the time carrying a Browning Automatic. And I really thought the Browning Automatic was a great weapon, but it, it wasn't for the kind of fighting that we were doing. I complained about it. It was too heavy. Uh, to wheel around in night fighting, because that's what we were doing, is fighting at night all the time. Uh, and uh, so they said I could have the radio, be a radio man, which was heavier, <laughs> and, and a 45 pistol. In August 1952, during a static part of the war with forces on both sides holding the line, Simonek and his unit were patrolling various outposts in front of the American-held line just north of Seoul when they encountered a significant Chinese force. I had been out on a radio patrol with my own squad of 12 men and it was an all-night walk through pitch black areas. When we got back I managed to just crawl in a sack for about 15 minutes when I was told that I was going to be needed in the morning to go out to outpost Irene. This annoyed me a little bit because I'd been all, all night and they uh, had to um, use me again without any sleep. But I had been to the outpost before and no action had ever been there all the time I'd been on that particular part of the line. And so I took an old reader's digest and a can of precious beer in my big back pocket and thought I was really going to have a relaxing situation. Didn't turn out that way. We had fortunately taken the wrong direction to the outpost and the um, Chinese were waiting for us there, but they were waiting for us to come from another direction. Consequently, well, we almost walked in behind them. And when they realized it very late that we, we were right there that uh, they didn't do their job and, and we weren't as prepared as we should have been also. With his unit ambushed by an intense concentration of enemy mortar and small arms fire, he was forced to seek cover with the remaining members of the patrol in a nearby trench line. They killed the machine gunner who happened to be right behind me. The uh, fourth man in, in our group was shot right through the chest and he uh, sort of blocked the way of getting into that trench and but we finally got into it and got him laid out. The squad leader went to the right and I went to the left and my immediate sight was two Chinese officers standing talking as though having a conversation with a, a weapon that looked somewhat like a Browning automatic on a bipod on the, uh, on the ground. And I couldn't believe they didn't see me, and so I shot, hit them both, and then proceeded to empty the 45 pistol uh, at them. I realized that the situation would be pretty good if I could pop up and fire a 45 and try to outgun a burp gun or two, and then pop back down and crawl, say, 10 yards away. And it worked pretty good because uh, the, the grenades would come flying in 
where I was. And, and a lot of fire at the wrong spot, so it worked pretty good for, for all of us. But it didn't last too long. There's two grenades came in at the same time, right on, on the spot. And I managed to kick one away, but I couldn't, didn't think there was any time left for the second one. Shielding his fellow Marines from serious injury or death, Simonek threw himself on the grenade. Two of the fellows picked up the fellow that had been shot in the chest and carried him down. And two, the remaining two were trying to pick me up when the tank had fired another round because they said they spotted the Chinese coming at us. And so they effectively, effectively killed them, but also wounded the two fellows that were pick, about to pick me up. And I got a little bit in my right eye and shoulder. Uh, but we decided right then and there that their legs were still good. And that their wounds were, I think, more severe than mine and that they should get as far as they could go down now. So I was left there on top of that hill and <laughs> just all by myself wondering, what should I do next? <laughs> I didn't know. I crawled on my hands and knees with my feet up, which was awful awkward, just using my knees as a base. The rescue squad did come out almost uh, all the way to the outpost. I had crawled a good part of the way. And they picked me up then and there and got me to the main line very soon after that by helicopter. Robert Simonek was treated aboard the hospital ship Haven and later in Japan before returning to the United States. It was exactly one year after the incident that he learned he was to receive the Medal of Honor. President Eisenhower presented the medal along with six other fellows at the time. My, my grandmother, who was um, from Germany, had a very strong accent, and President Eisenhower was more impressed with her listening to her talk than he was with me. And he just enjoyed talking with her and listening to her accent. And it had been her first time on an airplane, she just thrilled to death. I used to talk to the uh, high schools. I told them, of course, that this is the finest country in the world, that maybe you should all try to get away from it sometime in your life so to know how good it is to be a citizen of the United States. But I also told them that no matter how much we love our country, we fought for each other. We never thought about it as self-sacrifice as much as the necessity to do your job so that the group could succeed. Any sacrifices we really made were, were for each other. <laughs>